goodness with face, pat, and tiz. And I'm I'm really glad that you ended on that note of just talking about Freddie Gibbs and his uh his search to be the the basically the number one guy out there. You know what I mean? Um, I think a lot of people want to be number one, but everybody can't be that. You know what I mean? It just ain't possible. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna get into our top. MCs since the year 2000. So these are all MCs. These are, we're, we're going to try to cramp. Like we didn't want to go before 2000 because then when you just open it up to of all time, I feel like that's that's too much at one time. So the way we're going to break this down is we're going to find out who is the top MC of the 2000s. That's from the year 2000 until today. And we're going to find out who was the top MC from before 2000, and then we're going to pit them head to head in a clash uh, and have you guys out there in the pod squad vote on it. Um, so let's get off into this, man. Um, let me go ahead and break this down on how we're going to do this to y'all. Um, basically, each of us, me, Face, and Pat, um, we, brought ten, we brought 10 people to the table, and we're going to uh, basically list them out tonight. Um, and all of those people had to have had their debut album in the year 2000 or after. Once we narrow that list down and we get rid of any duplicates that we had on our list, from there, we would then determine, use our criteria to make sure that everybody that's on the list is actually what we consider an MC, meaning they follow the pod, the partners uh, criteria for determining an MC, which means you have the three criteria of marketability, that means you have at least a goal or streaming equivalent when you drop an album or you have significant um, sales as far as your merchandise and touring or you have some type of um, presence that causes you to have brand deals and other lucrative uh, endorsements um, outside of that that constantly have you being marketed to the public. So um, an example of that would be something like uh, you got a meal deal with McDonald's or you may not be so, selling the most albums, but you got um, a bunch of fashion deals or you got a show, a reality show type thing going on where you're still getting net worth and people want to see you. Um, Your net worth is important, right? Correct. Correct. Like that, correct. True. You got to be okay. able to generate <laughs> revenue for from some avenue. Um, lyricism. Is the second criteria, and that's basically you know what it is. It's syllables pieced together, the flow, the cadence, the figurative language used, um, the emotions emoked, the emotions evoked by your narrative, um, blowing into the mic. You know, you don't want to be doing that. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the emotions evoked, and your own lyrics. It has to be your own lyrics, and uh, preferably not rapping. I mean, rapping, not singing. So we, you know, we're not talking about people who are actually singing all of their lyrics. Uh, we're talking about our rappers. Um, and then the third thing was stage presence slash emceeing ability, crowd participation at shows. How much your show is, how much of your show is actually you performing versus the crowd just singing your lyrics for you. Um, your ability to generate audience response based off of your performance. So how you move in the crowd, you know, the art of MC. So once we've established who actually stays on that list, um, we'll seal this round and then we'll move on to the next round next week where we will then be moving these people into brackets and starting the first round of narrowing this list down. And obviously the pod squad will actually vote on the finals. So when we get to the finals of this list, the pod squad will determine who is the best MC. Yay. Dum, all right. Dum, so now dum. that y'all know how we broke this uh, down, uh, we all got our list of 10. So um, do one of y'all want to go first and giving us your list of 10 MCs? And I'm actually uh, typing this running list. So uh, we got it. And I'm going to show it on the screen so that the pod squad at home can see it. All right. 
Okay, Pat going first. Pat. Let's see what, what, what characters he picked. Is this. And if we have any challenges to anybody list before we even like get to the point where we start like actually determining if they need to make it, let it be known. So like if somebody picks somebody and they're not actually an artist from the 2000s or something like that, like let's call that out. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I need to um I need to figure out myself or whatever. So come on with it. You... All right. That's good. That's... Really, I just like we got a whole list of just all like the most memorable memorable uh rappers that came out 2000 afterwards so i'm going to just go down the list and then i'll go from there um i got kendrick okay i have i have j cole that's a duplicate that's a duplicate go ahead okay um just knock that out the way um face have... right over there Oh yeah, trying to pull up this list. You you wrestling with the phone or something? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> um, I have I have Cameron. Okay, I have Cameron because technically um, but, he came out two thousand. You still nah. can't. Nah, horse and carriage. That's nineties, bro. You gotta remember SDE. That is true. You gotta remember like his his catalog started before Dipset. When I looked, when I looked Cam- up SDE, Cameron's first Cameron's first album, Confessions of Fire, was in the nineties. Cause I was riding. To, oh, I was riding to middle. Of, I was riding the middle of high school, bumping that album. Da-na-na, 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 yeah. Da-na-na. Yeah, I remember that album. That is true. That was in the 90s. That okay. had a Sorry. band from TV on it. Yeah, that had some hits on it. So let's No, that wasn't band from TV. What's a band from TV? What album was it? Band that from had TV? Horse I think Car- that was that on had Nori. Horse and Carriage on it. That had Horse and Carriage on it. That's what it was. In 357. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Cameron can't go. Can't go. Killer Mike? Okay. I can ride okay. with that. All right. Okay. Um, I was going to put the game, but I don't like the game. So don't put the game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just brought I don't him like up it. just to say I that. just brought him up because he's like one of the rappers after the 2000s, pretty much. Um, you brought him up to throw him out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Grand opening, grand closing. I mean that. Question. Yep. Would you consider Lil Wayne a 2000s rap? No, because he came out in nope. the 90s. Nope. Jeez. Okay. Nope. Okay. So this makes it a lot yeah. easier. Yeah. <clears throat> Ludacris. Okay. Ludacris. Uh, when was Luda's first album? I believe that was exactly was that- 2000. Was it? That was back for the first time. Yeah. Uh, oh, that no was it. Ludacris's first album was Incognito. That came oh. out in 1998. Finally that being released it. in 1999. Uh, then back for the first time came out in 2000. But his first album came out in 1998. But he really didn't really get commercial fame until, um, because you could technically say that, um, you could technically say that about a lot of rappers that came out in the in the that two thousands, like they had, um, I would say, like Joe Biden first album came out two thousand. Or whatever, but he yeah, the album was... came out in 2000, then that's when we counted. We're going by the first okay. album, that was the mm. criteria. That's why I said it like that so that it was a clear cut. Mm. It wasn't like we can move the goalpost. The album, if the album came out in 2000 or oh, after, because <laughs> I got because one of the people on my list that mm-hmm. may not, I don't, I haven't heard you say it yet, so it's still not a duplicate. But one of the people on my list is one of those people that like. Technically, you heard about them and you knew about them before 2000, but their album did not actually come out until 2000. 
True. Yeah. Mm, okay. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. All right. Big Sean. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll put Big Sean on that. But what number are we at now? We are. Uh, I don't know how many this is for you because some of yours was duplicates and you were supposed to just have only 10 anyway. So I, I don't know what number this is for you. Okay. I'll say it's six. Okay, that sounds reasonable. You said six? Sounds reasonable. Yeah. About four of them got thrown out and two of them are on the on the list right now. So yeah, sounds reasonable. Okay. So yeah, well, I say can if you Cole. if you don't if you don't count the game. <laughs> nah, we're not counting him. Um, Killer Mike, <laughs> Big Sean. We said that. Um, dang, it really ain't that many people out there. Um, I my per one of my personal favorites. But I don't think. Uh, uh-uh, put it out there. Childish Gambino. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's he's def he's definitely of the two thousands. I I'm kind of iffy about him because some albums you can't really include because they're not rap albums. But he got rap albums. He'd be rapping actually. Oh, so. uh, yeah. let's see. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicki Minaj. Okay. Hmm. Cause she can act, she actually writes her shit. So okay, okay, okay. I haven't had any proof or <laughs> anything yet that anybody has like ghostwrited anything for her or whatever. Um, and my knowledge. I can guarantee like, you, nobody ghostwrited for anybody. Yo, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I told I y'all, man. At this time, I had to. My grandma is so fucked up at this time. Like, I'm all good. good. You got any other candidates? Uh, let's see. Because we're going straight for rapping. Excuse me. Wale. <laughs> Mike <laughs> left. <laughs> okay. Can you do that all over again? Next but candidate. Wale. Okay. So Wale. Yeah. Wale gets I don't the like I don't I don't really listen to him that much, but I respect him. Okay. I, I, I know I will. He's two thousands, he's definitely rap. So I can roll with you. Mm-hmm. Uh let's see. My I got Rick Ross. Oh yeah. Rose. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, like <laughs> dramatic pause. Like, boy, this gonna be some editing here, boy. God damn. It, it is, man. Do you know it's your like, list? Did, did you do your homework? I did my homework, is man. <laughs> it's just like some of these rappers that came out, the ones that I actually know of that came out. Like, this is my thing. Like, like you do chance the rapper. <laughs> like okay, so like chance, chance the rapper. Like chance the rapper. But I don't like him. But I know he's one of the trappers that came out in 2000. Nigga, we ain't actually who you like. We talking about the top MCs of the 2000s. Okay, so. I don't like that, everybody in the 90s that's probably going to end up being on the top MCs from before 2000. But I'm going to have to put them if it makes sense. This is our definitive partners list here, Pat. True. The only other ones that I know after that is. I was going to, no, I can't. All right, you got one more person. Yeah, and then we're one more person? <laughs> God yeah. damn, what? what the fuck is going yeah, this on? Is like this. See, this is what happens when you don't do your homework, people. Kids, do your homework. It, it's like I did my homework. It's just that I can't home. really decide on your any homework. Of Either, if you did your homework, you would have had your t- list of 10 and you would have been rattling your list off here. We would have been discuss- discussing the list, not going, listen to you go, uh-huh. um, uh, um, uh, uh, all right, but my last two that I'm gonna put up here because I've been listening to them for the past five years is Benny the Butcher and Conway. It's Benny the Butcher okay, and Conway. Benny, 
Benny the Butcher. Okay. And Conway. The machine. All right. That's a uh-huh. see, look, you got through that. It wasn't as bad as you as you thought it was gonna be. See, look at it. You did it. Meek Mill. I forgot. Meek Mill. Meek Mill. He's supposed to be out there because he just came. He came out in that time. Meek okay. Meek. Add it. Add it. And Face. Mac Miller. And, and Mac Miller, and I, I was going to say the baby, yeah. but... Nigga, you, nigga, you got 10, 10, 10, Pat Juan, 10, god damn. You didn't I'm do done, your homework, done. Pat. You didn't do your homework. This I'm is done, what happens, done. people. I just didn't decide. God damn. I, I like so many rappers, man. All right, now I'm going to run off the opinion for you. Uh, come on, come on, face He'd be a lot quicker than me. Well, Eminem. Who? Eminem. Slim Shady, Martin Madden. Hold up, hold up. Eminem came out in the 90s, right? I think Infinite did, but Slim Shady, I'm not sure. Slim Shady LP. Hold on. What was the year of his first? Yeah, the Slim Shady EP came out in 1997. Kid. Uh, uh, the release date, Eminem was 1999. Yeah, yeah. Yep. One year shot. Okay. Get him out of here. Okay. That's, that's what this process happened to me. is for. That's see, what this process see, is for. It happened to me. Yeah. So, a couple of times. I think I happened about that shit. God damn it. Somebody else gonna feel this shit. All right. Kendrick? <laughs> okay, that's a repeat. Yep. All three of us had him. Beautiful. No, you know it's you know so. good if it's a repeat. Right. Jayco. That's a repeat. Yup, got him. No, 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 they're good if it's a repeat. Two chains. Repeat. Got him. That's a repeat. Okay. So me and Face was on the same page. Style P. Styles P. Hold on. No. No, he because he came out in the 90s. He came out with a bad boy. But is that would you consider that a solo album? Because his solo didn't come out until the 2000s. He got an album See, out of the 90s. First uh, album, was, first album was out before 2000. Yeah, cool boy, <laughs> was the case, I would have put it Andre up there, but you know, boy would, would I, I, boy would I have? Yeah. Of course, who would? Schoolboy Q. Damn. Okay. I, be I like Schoolboy. Schoolboy. Okay. Schoolboy. Oh, Beanie oh, Siegel. Oh, but I'm not sure about his album. Who you said? Hmm? Beanie Siegel. Okay, that's a repeat. Okay, and it, and it is. It, it came out in Feb- February of 2000. Fab and Corrupt. Who? Fabulous Corrupt. and Corrupt. Okay, Corrupt. Fabulous. Mm-hmm. Fabulous is a repeat. He stuck. I got his. His is definitely uh, after 2000. And Corrupt mm-hmm. is 90s. Dog Pound. Remember, he was with uh, Snoop Dogg, you know. That was uh and the doggy style album and all that was like 93, 94. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, that before 2000 list is gonna be tough as fuck. Yes, it's too many. Cause that's that's gonna be it's way it's way too many. It's way it's way too many. But it might be easy for me because I know exactly the probably my definitive ones. You got your 10 for that. <laughs> Pat will do his homework for that one, y'all. <laughs> is these new rappers, man? I don't. Mm. And then well, I wanted to make sure I didn't. Too, so. yeah, I, I didn't you. want. To, I wanted to make sure I brought out some rappers that y'all weren't going to say. So I make sure we got the full spectrum of the two thousands into now. But yeah, but no yeah, problem. go ahead, face. I don't want to interrupt. Um. Uh, yeah, face. You got any more? Was that your? Was that your list? Or you got more? Dun, All right. Dun, dun. Um, I guess that was it. Um, so for my list, man, my 10, uh, you're gonna hear some repeats again, um, which is good because that lets you just know that you know stream that of content is flowing, and them dudes are probably <clears throat> some people that, that deserve good. to definitely be on this list. Um, so we got Kendrick, I had two chains, I had Lupe Fiasco, mm. um, I had Joe Button, mm-hmm. I had Royce 5'9. Mm. I had Fabulous. I had Pusha T. I had J. Cole. I had Tobin Nigue. 
and they have Benny Siegel. So our total list combined, we have 21 people that will be bracketed um, or that we can discuss tonight, really, because that's really what tonight is, discussing do they meet all three criteria to stay on this list now that we know that they're at least from the right era. So the 21 people we're looking at is Kendrick Lamar, Two Chains, Lupe Fiasco, Joe Button, Royce Five Nine, Fabulous, Pusha T, J. Cole, Toby Nigue, Beanie Siegel, Killer Mike, Big Sean, Childish Gambino, Nicki Minaj, Wale, Rick Ross, Chance the Rapper, Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, Meek Mill, and Schoolboy Q. So let's start at the top. Does Kendrick meet all three? Me? Yes. <laughs> Does he have the list? Lyricism, marketability, and the emceeing as far as his crowd performance. Yes, I've seen him on um, what was that show? Colbert that one mm -hmm. time promoting for that um that random al album he had. Awesome performance. Okay. I'm not awesome performance. So, face, do you Definitely. agree? Any rebuttal? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Check on one face. Okay, I think face may have stepped away. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll go to the next one. Two chains. Does he meet all three? Does he have the marketability, lyricism, and the crowd participation slash stage present that it takes to be an MC and move the crowd? I'm gonna say yeah. yes. Um, yeah. He actually <clears throat> performs his songs. Um, one of my favorite MTV Awards performances for him and uh, Lil Wayne. Um, that year, like I, I feel like he's definitely really good at like all three of these, and he's super marketable. He's on every fucking thing. Like, he's everywhere. So, uh -huh. definitely meets all three. Um, the next one, Lupe Fiasco. Does he meet all three? Now, this is where it gets sticky. So, lyricism, that's an obvious. Absolutely. Or whatever. He's definitely uh, a guy to your pen. Uh... I never really actually, like, other than, like, TV shows, like, night shows or something like that, I never really, like, seen him in concert or whatever like that, but I'm pretty sure he got that stage performance. If you can remember them lyrics like that, you you got those, that usually kind of goes hand in hand, pretty much, especially if it's your fan base right. or whatever, and they came to see you, it'll be easy to overcome. Now, marketability, that is where... Like, it's obvious he has some marketability, but he may not have the same amount of marketable, uh, marketability as, like, a Kendrick as a chain or a chain just because of more content, I guess, or whatever. I guess. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to say, I'm gonna say it I works think just because he, he got a gold out. So I, mm -hmm. I, I put that on there as like under marketability, like you know, <clears throat> if you have a gold or a gold album at least or a streaming equivalent, lyricism, mm -hmm. um, or if you have like brand deals, et cetera, or if your merch and your touring is. So like you can have one of the three at a high level and still be mm -hmm. considered marketable. And when <clears throat> we get into the brackets and we start breaking down head-to-head -head competitions, then that's when we're looking at who, they're looking at the that's what we're depth. splitting hairs like all right if they're equal lyricism in the lyricism category then who has the better stage show who has the most marketability yeah. between, you see what i'm saying okay so if they got it I, that's the only reason i say he is they no, we just going through go, and just I know say he got, got a whole album exactly we just uh, established in the, the semifinals tonight. yeah right and then we bracket okay. it and then next week when we come back we'll have a bracket and we'll be going through busting it down like between Okay, between these two MCs, who makes it to the next round? Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Boom. So uh Lupe seems like he's good. Joe Button. That's a yeah. Yeah. I I'm just off a of pass. Um, or whatever. Now, he might have he might have fucked up a lot of deals. Or <laughs> whatever. But he got to have some marketability if they keep coming to him. Plus, he kind of Mr. Love and Hip Hop. That's real. 
Um, you know, how is his stage show? Like, I don't know much about his crowd and like his MCing. Oh, stage show? Yeah, rap, he. But I haven't seen. Yeah, him, so I just don't know. Yeah, like it, it's it's just like with with Lupe, especially if you a fan that came to see him or whatever. Yeah, he definitely. It, he's not a slack person when it comes to Mike. That's like part of his whole MC or whatever. It's just okay. It's, Go hand to hand, you know. Plus, he got to keep up with Roy, when he was in Slaughterhouse, Royce, Crooked Eye, and Joel Ortiz. So you you can't be slack when you, you know what I'm saying, with four other brothers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Competition. Um. So um. Next on the list is Royce Five Nine. Does he fit? I would say so. Over the past couple of albums that he had he's definitely been getting a lot more marketable um success um he's definitely getting looked at a lot more uh with his individual albums he definitely got the lyricism and like i said you know as far as the stage performance he got that down packed too okay Mm -hmm. um it might not be as let's see let me look at his albums because I'm not sure if he actually had like a platinum album yet. Yeah, I'm like, has he had platinum or gold. or or a gold? Either one. That that would let us know. Because mm-hmm. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know. Awards and nominations. Trying to look. There we go. He. With that, would that include awards like Grammy? Is that would that be part of platinum gold? Um awards, no. No, okay. Um that would be more like marketability, I guess. Like how we mm-hmm. you know. But what I will say is he seems to have an album with Eminem, uh Hail the Sequel. That, yeah, that that is platinum. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely already certified uh, gold for sure. He has another sh- uh, gold album with uh, Shady 15. So he has some some some, go- some gold album here. Um, yeah. He squeaks it. He squeaks in on the marketability side. Yeah, Bill. But, but, it, but yeah. it's narrow. It's narrow. I think he's going to have a tough shot in the brackets unless depending on who he goes against unless they are weak in one of those other areas on the market side yeah i think that's yeah. going to be the that's going to be the deal breaker between them because a lot of these are just they are down with the lyricism and the performance side but that's going to be the deal breaker absolutely that's going to be the the, the, the measuring stick i gotta feel like that and um mm-hmm. that and the crowd show mm-hmm. um the next one up is fabulous Yep, that that kind of goes with the boxes. Um, uh, the crowd yeah. show, I'm not social. It, it's it's he's his crowd show is the Royce Five Nine marketability. It squeaks in there, mm-hmm. but he's gonna have a tough <laughs> going against some of these other artists. Yeah, that really go in because his like, lyrics is not tough. really is not really like a hype high energy not a lot of energy in it. he's a very monotone yeah. rapper so his performance kind of mirrors that so it's going to be interesting to see how he stacks up against mm-hmm. some of these more um animated performers mm-hmm. but he's squeaking in there so so far we had to keep nobody off the list guys based on the actual mc criteria so we're looking good uh we're going to finish out this list and then probably you know what i'm saying uh we'll be ready for next week for the brackets and for round two um Let's see, we got uh next up on the list, Pusha T. Yeah. Another hometown hero. Do we know um, anything about his crouch, like his actual performance, like his concert? I've been there before. I actually promoted for some of them. So like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he he, he checks that box. Yeah, he's on the MC lane when it comes to the performance or whatever. Okay. You can see it when he rhymes, sometimes when he freestyle. Anytime he got that ugly face, he'd be like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I mean to, to be quite honest, to be yeah. honest with you, I like grew as far with the respect with Pusha T. Because oh, as far as that, because I didn't want to be 
how I say, I when it comes, I want to be non-biased when I'm talking about lyricism or whatever. And then when he first came out, I was like, all right, this is another drug rapper. But he is. He's. I mean, literally, it's another another, another drug rapper. That's this whole right. whole lane. But he's gotten better and better and better musically and lyrically. To me, to me, I feel like he's gotten a lot better. Um, more visual lyrics. Okay. <clears throat> So he checks the box, guys. He makes them. the next one. I and, feel like I don't even know if we need to talk about him. He's one of those uh, Kendrick Lamar realm guys. It's just kind of like, yeah, we have to put him on the list. It goes without said. J Cole. Um, yeah, he's there. Mm-hmm. Say less. Um, Platinum the next, with no features. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When you could do that, you you did. You you done. You good. The next artist is tough though. Toby mm-hmm. Nigue. Now you got to give me more information with him because I've only heard like a couple of things. I haven't heard anything that I haven't liked or whatever. Right. I've everything that I've listened is 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 good. But as far as I feel like he's just a rather new artist or whatever, and we don't have enough information to even know if it. You know, like I, I don't That's feel right. like he got to the point where we can even put the accolades in for the market side. Or whatever. I've seen him perform. I know he got the performance. And we definitely know he got the lyric lyricism, excuse me. Red Bull kicking in. <laughs> um I would say this. He has albums out. They have none of them have gone gold as far as normal, but that's why I put the streaming equivalent, just because I know artists that come out after a certain year, they're not gonna have <clears throat> that many of them would go albums as far as like mm-hmm. physical sales but streaming mm-hmm. he's viral on a lot of his shit mm-hmm. um so i feel like marketability in that lane definitely and when you got beyonce shouting you out and oh, yeah. shit like that you check that box so i feel like he squeaks bad with that but i feel like it is going to get interested when you compare um Ex- like if somebody with equal exposure and then you have to get to record sales to break that marketability category, I feel like that's going to get interesting. True. Yeah. True. Um, the next one is Beanie <clears throat> Siegel. Matt, daddy, young scrappy. Kind of goes without saying. Beanie, I, Beanie I, checks the boxes, y'all. Chaining uh, boxes. I don't I know where realize. he stands compared, but he checks the boxes. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Killer Mike. This is where I got to check because I don't know as far like marketability. I feel like it because you got a TV show or something, then you probably mm-hmm. are going to check. And well, he's well known <laughs> in the media. Right. He's definitely well known in the media. I think his, um, but Run the Jewels, his group with LP, they've gotten a lot of accolades themselves, actually. So, um, okay. That's why I'm looking it up now. And to be quite honest when it comes to when it comes to run the jewels and their success i'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure that it's like not to down credit lp because he he has he's an awesome lyricist but killer mike is well known is very well known compared to lp lp is a more underground artist the whole mixture of you know killer mike comes from the dungeon family camp so on the underground rapper side, it kind of he could he may look like a like just a, a mainstream artist compared to LP. So if they got any accolades, it's definitely probably on my opinion opinion the on the backs of like Killer Mike and and his um basically his media presence. Gotcha. Much. Gotcha. Okay, I think so. Killer Mike is in there. He's carrying the whole group. I definitely say mm-hmm. that. That puts you on there. Um, Big Sean. Yes, I don't, I don't know about his concerts. I have no. I, I have uh, no. I have no idea about his concerts. Cause I never. So really I had. think that's the one part that um I'm questioning. Um, we're gonna have to look it up. But yeah, he mm-hmm. may have to. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, we'll get back to y'all on that one. Uh. I'm going to put him maybe if he makes it on the bracket, he might have to be like by himself for the first round so I can figure it out. And then we bring him back in. Um, mm-hmm. Childish Gambino. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Easy money. Nicki Minaj, yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wale. I feel like yes. I don't know yes. his concert that much, but I feel like yes. Do you know his I anything about his concert game? His concert, I'm I'm pretty sure his concert game is awesome because one, you got the back of MMG at one time. Two, you're from DC or whatever. This is true. And DC got, you know, the backyard band Go Go feel, and everything about Go Go is crowd participation. That is very true. I can't argue. So he got a. He he got a he shout got out a, to um, Nicky Proctor Walter for dropping those all those tracks on us. Appreciate the good listening. He got a cheat code with the go go culture, so I feel yeah. like yeah, that's real. Um, Rose, that's my nickname. Yeah, Rose, that's my nickname. I just wanted to say that. I, I don't even, know. <laughs> but I feel like yes, he definitely. Uh, met, meets the criteria. Chance the rapper, yes, 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 yes. Um, I feel like the next two are definitely gonna. I'm gonna have to lean toward whatever you say, just because I don't honestly know know too much about them that much, especially about their stage. So, like, I feel like commercial commercially, they got the streaming numbers to back it up. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like as far as Lyricism, they're definitely dope lyricists. So I, I don't have a question about that. My only question would be how their, what is their stage show? What is their ability to actually move a crowd? I don't know. Performance nostalgia of like old school hip hop. If you ever, how to say, if you ever look at, at one of their um, like concerts, it looks mm-hmm. like an old school 90s concert. They're all hyped up. Like the crowd that you would see, like in Eight Mile, it, it gives you that old, that old feeling. Like, like, all right, I'm going to. Nobody wants to really feel like this, but I'm going to a concert. It's gonna be extra hip hopity. I might be around a couple of drug and killers, and I might be around a couple of gangsters because they into this. Somebody type of might music. get stabbed for the night out. I might, get but I'm gonna have a good time. But I'm gonna have a good time. And I'm a majority of the time, just imagine it's just like a new school version of like a locks um concert gotcha. with Benny the Butcher and Conway. So I I would I would say they wouldn't even have the success that they have now without the performance permit, pretty much. Because you you know, we got all kinds of drug rapidity rap rappers all the time. Now they're a little bit more proficient than the average rapper, of course, but Gotcha. You, we have those come out every single day. You know what I'm saying? Same yep. type of content, but they're not clicking. Griselda seems like the one, one rap group that got that old nostalgic, I'm going to just spit bars feeling. And people are, you know, leaning on to like Jay-Z even said, yo, I'm listening to Griselda. I've, I've heard him say that, like try to have talks with them anyway, just because they give that, that old N- New York nostalgia feeling even though they're from Buffalo, New York. Right. So they definitely got a cult following or whatever. I've been following them since like 2015 or whatever. I did right. not think they would blow up like they had now. I yeah. thought they were going to stick the state underground. Gotcha. <laughs> OPL, all right? Yeah. Sir. Over here, you know, my weekly uh, fuck up doing the show where I uh, bang something, break something, or do something crazy that just makes a random sound. And uh, yeah. But moving on. Um, so, right, Con- so, so Conway and Benny stayed. Meek Mill. Yes. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't even like, the, the, I'm not even a big Meek Mill fan. I just respect right. him. You I know definitely I mean? know he got the numbers as far as the reason. I know he got a gold album. Mm-hmm. Um, and he definitely got the streaming numbers. Um, I think, I feel like the crowd participation with songs like, uh, hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was mm-hmm. finished. Like, I feel like songs like that are yeah. going to just lend to more ex- good performances hype. as far as, yeah, yeah energy. like his energy. Yeah. So, like, I feel like they'll be good, but I've never seen one of his shows to know for sure. Have any one of you have any reference point for, for that? I, I've seen them. I've seen them. They're hype. Okay. They're, okay. He, you know, I, he's he's kind of got, like, that festival 
um Got crowd almost. You know, kind of like a future March Madness type back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. But he can rap. Um it's cool boy Q. I think he's a yes. I, I just feel like that's definitely a yes. Um, I don't yeah. see neither one of those three boxes he doesn't check. He may not check it as much as another person, and we'll get to that when we get to the brackets, but I definitely think he's a he's one of those. Like it's just you know, no brainers. So we got our list of 21, my people. We're gonna definitely uh double check on 21. 21. Who was on Toby? Um, as far as the the numbers, as far as the marketability. No, who was it that we was checking on? Was it Big Sean on the on the stage show or something? Yeah, Big Sean on the okay. stage show. Yeah, if, if, really hey man, about. let us know in the comments below. If you've been to a Big Sean concert, if you've seen one of his live shows, let us know how it is. Let us know if That's he's true. actually emceeing. Is it more just the music itself driving things, or is he actually? You know, commanding I, the stage, etc. I just don't know. I I can't imagine him not having a good show because I, I can't, like man. Because that big head get the weighing him down. I can imagine it being a burden. <laughs> he got a little body with big head, man. I can imagine that being a burden. The neck get tied halfway <laughs> through the show, yo, and start leaning and shit. I, I can imagine. Oh, uh, I I almost feel like he could be in between the fabulous if if it is like a uh, or a Wale. Because it kind of came okay. out at the same time. So okay. either or. Like if he had a bad night, it might be like a, a fabulous night or whatever when fabulous don't have too many girls in the crowd or whatever that want to listen to that one song or something like that. Just to give an example or whatever. I, I got what you're saying. I can roll yeah. with that. So well, uh, that's our list, man. We got our 21. Brackets coming out next week. We'll 20. be going into round two where we actually start to move people throughout the rounds and start actually narrowing down this list to see who is the top MC of the 2000s. Listen to our list. Let us know who we forgot in the comments below. And possibly, uh, depending on who y'all add, man, if I got the time, I'm going to try to add them to the bracket before next week. And we might have a larger list than this if they meet the other three criteria. Um, shoot your names to us so we can look at them in the comments and we can judge them throughout the week. And definitive brackets coming next week, man. So that is the partners list to start the conversation on the top MC since 2000. Who do we leave off? Let us know down in the comments below. And let us know who you think is going to end up ultimately being the top MC since 2000. Let's get ready to rumble. I mean, let's get ready to rumble. Although we do got to be careful saying that because I believe if you say that, Michael Buffett will sue you. Oh, no, no. I don't got no money, Michael them. Buffett. And I respect you. And, like, I feel yeah. like he, he got that shit copyrighted. He be tripping off of like, well, he'll sue your ass. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, no, nah, I was just Michael paying Buffett. homage, man. Michael Buffer, Michael Buffer published. YouTube, that. fair use. That. We, we were just using that to, you it know, was, add it a, was under 30 add seconds. A parody. It was a parody. <laughs> it was it under was 30 seconds, man. That, we'll was get for, much that was for entertainment him. uses only. That is not our original and phrase. We did not create that phrase. You would not sit on any merch. We are not getting paid off that phrase. And thank you for your performance uh, at the the locks versus dip set versus. I keep saying the, Jada, the Jada Kiss versus. In my Indeed. head, I keep saying the Jada Kiss versus. <laughs> well, technically, that is kind of what it turned into. Yeah, it, it kind of just turned into his shining uh, magnum opus of just. Mm. MC already. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you were MC, you got to take those moments. Because they're and not going to get it to the hell out of it. Yes, he did. One day I'm going to tell you all about my MC moment when KRS1 passed me the mic. That'll be next time on the partners. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I think that's in one of our one of your uh when we did your oh, interview. Oh, remember when me and Pat shit. remember when me and Faith interviewed you? Oh, shoot. I need to go back. I need to go back. Man, we got so many episodes now, man. That's just you might crazy. have to just go back and clip that, uh, take that clip, actually. Yo, man. That's, yeah, I think you did tell us that. So much content. I'm still looking for that um, videographer that got me actually on stage. Oh, yeah. That's pretty dope. That is mm-hmm. pretty dope experience. And see if we can get him to get us on some more stages. That'd be dope. Have us a partner backstage uh, something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But you know. Shout out to us, man. Whoever helped that out, I'll let your boys. But yeah, man, uh, so that's our list for this week, man.